One of the most effective teaching strategies you can use to increase on-task student behaviour is a do now or settling activity at the beginning of your lessons. When students come to your classroom, either from another subject area or from the playground, their minds are swirling with whatever has been happening in that setting. And it's a highly effective teaching practice to provide a short task that orientates students to your subject and to the learning. And this will become the classroom habit of the do now. And this practice will assist your well-being because it will streamline lesson planning and increase your effectiveness as a teacher. In this video, you will learn the essential elements of the do now activity that prevents off-task student behavior. You can implement this practice into your classroom with minimal preparation and maximum effect if you follow these simple steps. The do now activity will become an integral part of your lesson planning that will reduce problem student behavior and increase student engagement and participation by maximizing learning and creating bell-to-bell -bell learning time. The beauty of the do now activity is that it becomes part of the routine at the beginning of your lessons and students know that as soon as they walk in, they need to begin. There's no need for them to ask, what do we do? Because you always start with the do now activity. This means that learning begins immediately, reducing wasted time and giving you time to greet students at the door and check in with anyone who may need extra assistance. This may be your time to check in with the students who come to class anxious, hungry, thirsty, angry or tired and see how you can help them regulate their emotions and have their needs met. I'm Mari Amaro and I'm the Principal Presenter at The Highly Effective Teacher. I'm a teacher and I've been working with students and supporting teachers for over 30 years. I'm passionate about teacher wellbeing and I combine research and experience to provide teaching strategies that improve teacher wellbeing, especially the practices that take very little or no extra time. That can actually give you back time because you're working more effectively. I love coaching teachers so that they thrive in the teaching profession, not just survive. Improved teacher wellbeing means improved student wellbeing, and that contributes to better academic and social outcomes for all our students. If you'd like to learn more about teacher wellbeing, please subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so that you receive notifications of all our videos. We publish two videos a week, so make sure you don't miss out on any of the content. When you subscribe, that helps to support the channel it means that we can keep making these videos and get the information and support out to more teachers. And if you know anyone you think would benefit from the wellbeing information in these videos, please share with your colleagues, with your friends, with your family. Everyone knows a teacher or someone who works in a school. Doug Lemov in Teach Like a Champion says that there are four critical elements to the effective, efficient do now. And I've added a fifth component. Number one, the do now is always in the same place so that it becomes the habit of all your students and you. You can write it on the board, either in the same place every day or post it on a piece of butcher's paper. You could also have the do now activity printed on a worksheet and students collect them as they arrive or alternatively, you put them on each student's desk before they get into the classroom. And if you'd like to learn more about how to incorporate effective and time-saving routines with your class, check out our video on the importance of developing routines and procedures to prevent difficult student behaviour. Number two, students must be able to complete the Do Now activity independently without any direction from you and mostly without any discussion with their classmates or any um, checking in with any material unless it's something that you provide with the do now. So if it does call for reference to additional resources, you're going to provide that somewhere easily for them to access in the classroom, either posted or it's onto the worksheet as well. And if you have to provide assistance or instruction for the do now, that defeats the purpose of developing self-directed learning habits with your students. Number three, students should be successful with the do now to begin the lesson on a positive note and provide the impetus for continued learning. Open-ended tasks are really useful for this. And when students are successful at the beginning of your lesson, this develops positive emotions which promote better learning outcomes and more authentic engagement in the learning. 
And for a comprehensive list of ideas of Do Now activities, check out my book, Habits of Highly Effective Teachers, where there are loads of suggestions that take very little preparation time. And as well as the Do Now activities, the book, A Simple Approach to Classroom Management. It describes in detail how to prevent difficult student behaviour and be successful in the classroom by increasing student engagement. Number four, the Do Now activity should take three to five minutes maximum and require some kind of writing. Because of this, you'll be able to check for understanding and address some common mistakes. And while it's not a test and you don't want your students to view it as a test, it will provide you with some helpful formative assessment for future planning. Number five, the Do Now should generally either preview the day's lesson by acting as a stimulus. For example, you're studying amoeba and you provide a magnified picture of a subject and ask the students to brainstorm as many ideas for what it may be. Or you give them a quick quiz to review a recent lesson, either the last one or something in the past. A couple of things you need to beware, beware of when you're using the Do Now is number one, Don't make the do now too long so that it becomes the lesson. You may be tempted to let kids keep working on it when actually that's not what your lesson's meant to be about. The do now should be short and snappy. So use a timer and stop after a maximum of five minutes. And number two, trying to review too much content is a danger in there. So it's better to review a small amount of knowledge or a small amount of skills and do that well. Teachers love lists of ideas, so I'm going to give you five Do Now activities that you can use with any year level. There's three things that you found out in the last lesson. Summarise this chapter or character in five bullet points. Write five top tips or golden rules for a particular topic area. Create a mini poster to show what you've learnt. And create a mnemonic that reflects the meaning of a new word or a term that you have learned. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and happy teaching.